arts and culture. This budget also fails the arts and culture community. There is so much talk about growing the economy from that side of the house, repeated so often that the meaning has been lost. How about creating the economy? Once again, this government is failing to capitalize on the enormous talents of BC's 26,000 artists. The creative sector GDP is more than $4 billion annually. Between 2002 and 2007, the growth of this sector outpaced agriculture, forestry, fishing, hunting combined. And yet, investment in arts and culture is flatlined in this budget. This comes after years of harsh cuts and underfunding between 2009 and 2011. For example, there was a 40% cut to the BC Arts Council. The latest data I have access to uh, from 2012 shows this government to be the lowest per capita funder among all provinces in Canada. Arts groups have called for investment in BC Arts Council grants programs to be a minimum of $32 million in the 2014 budget, but this request was ignored once again. Even this government's own select standing on finance, which I sat on, wholeheartedly recommended additional funding to the BC Arts Council. And before the members opposite indulge with their usual heckle cliches about living within our means and so on, let rem me remind them that this government's own research has indicated that every dollar invested in the arts brings back $1.38. The members opposite only have to refer to an excellent document called Moving BC's Creative Industries Forward, a cross-sectoral approach, to be educated on the need to embrace this sector for the sake of our economy. It's part of a creative and greener economy that we're all looking for. Investing in the arts is an investment that pays handsome dividends. And just as importantly, the arts enrich our lives. The arts bring us joy and inspiration and can help us see the world in new ways. I call on the members opposite to recognize the remarkable creativity and potential of the arts and culture community. This government is in desperate needs of, need of new energy, new ideas, and new ways of seeing old problems. This budget is uh, definitive evidence of that. So why not draw on the creative sector itself? Why not create a select standing committee on arts, culture, and the creative economy? We can give people who are experts in arts and culture direct access to the parliamentary process. The select standing committee on arts, culture, and the creative economy could help create and move forward a provincial vision for arts and culture, something that is currently missing in BC, as this budget demonstrates. This committee could help fill the gap by forging stronger connections between people working in the arts and the people making arts policy, so the decisions we make today will keep the creative industry thriving in this province for years to come. This committee could also help forge stronger connections between arts leaders and tourism advocates, including our new Crown Corporation, Destination BC. We can formalize this connection and make arts a more central part of our, tourism, our provincial tourism strategy. This is a simple and long overdue step that could lead to an improved regional economy, protection and support for our unique cultural institutions, and more stable careers for those working in the creative industries. This is a relatively inexpensive idea that could be accomplished within the existing budget. Hundreds of artists across BC have joined me through a petition in calling on government to create this committee. Why not take advantage of the creative sector? Certainly, this government has not met a resource it didn't want to exploit.